Good morning. Thank you. I like that. I'm Dr. Ron Darbo, Chancellor of Penn State Altoona, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our Spring 2023 Commencement Ceremony. As you are already standing, please join me for the singing of a national anthem led by Penn State Altoona student Christian Howard. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Christian, please be seated. Again, I welcome you to Penn State Altoona's Spring 2023 Commencement Ceremony. Commencement is the highlight of our academic year. We come together today to honor our graduates for their talent, their hard work, their dedication, and for their achievement. For years, you, our graduates, have been striving to reach this educational milestone. We congratulate each of you for achieving this significant goal. Now it is time for you to set new and higher goals. We challenge you to continue to learn and to excel throughout the rest of your lives. There are many persons who have helped and supported you to reach this point. Please join me in showing our appreciation to them and so at this time, I will ask each group of supporters to stand, if they are able, and to remain standing until all have been recognized. Would all parents and guardians of the graduates please stand to be recognized? Would all the grandparents of our graduates please stand if they are able and be recognized? <laughs> Would all the spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends, partners, significant others of our graduates please stand and be recognized?
Would all the friends, well-wishers, and other relatives of the graduates please stand and be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. Penn State Altoona has the great privilege of having a caring faculty of extraordinary talent, a deeply dedicated staff, an advisory board, and an alumni society board, both of uncommon vision and commitment, and many, many other individuals whose beneficence contributes to our success. Those persons share a vision that is realized through the quality of the education you have received. Would our faculty, staff, advisory board, and alumni society members, and other special friends of Penn State Altoona, please stand if you are able and be recognized. Thank you. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce our platform party. Members of our party, as I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all members of the party are recognized. Audience, I ask that you please hold your applause until all are introduced. Roger Ricard, our speaker, who will be formally introduced in a few moments. Dr. Nicholas Rowland, representing the Board of Trustees of Penn State University. Bobby Miller, Chair of the Penn State Altoona Advisory Board. Tracy Heinisch, President of the Penn State Al Altoona Alumni Society Board. Dr. Peter Hopsaker, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Dr. Brian Black, Head of the Division of Arts and Humanities. Dr. Todd Batzel, Interim Head of the Division of Business, Engineering, and Information Sciences and Technology. Dr. Leon Hefner, Head of the Division of Education, Human Development, and Social Sciences. Dr. Ed Levery, Head of the Division of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. Sean Bernecki, Chair of the Penn State Altoona Faculty Senate. Dr. William White, Nomenclator. Gina Baird, College Registrar, and Dr. William Engelbrecht, our revered College Marshal. As a point of note, this ends Dr. Engelbrecht's 46th year at Penn State Altoona. Thank you, Dr. Engelbrecht, for honoring us with your talent and with your time. Thank you. Members of the party, please be seated. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Roger Ricard. Roger is the founder and president of Voices in Advocacy, the author of seven actions of highly effective advocates, and host of the Voices in Advocacy podcast. He has more than 30 years of experience as an advocacy professional, speaker, trainer, consultant, and author. As a recognized expert in advocacy engagement and grassroots activation, Roger works with a wide cross-section of organizations from a range of industries. He is a proud Penn State Nittany Lion and a self-confessed political junkie. Having received his education in political science, he has been an advocate for citizen involvement since the age of 13. He was elected to public office three times as a young man, served as a state senate staff member, and has worked on many political campaigns from his very own to a presidential campaign. At 6'8", Roger is a big man, a big thinker, and is casually known as the big guy with a bow tie. As you look at him today, you will see why. As you listen to him today, you will not be disappointed. Please join me in offering a warm Penn State Altoona welcome to Roger Ricard. The po 
podium is a wee bit small for someone of my height. It is an absolute honor to be here today to address Penn State Altoona's distinguished faculty and staff, proud parents and family, guests, Chancellor Darbo, fellow alumni, and most important, the graduating class of 2023. Today marks a milestone achievement. So please join me in our warmest congratulations to these outstanding graduates. It is with great pride that I participate in the graduation celebration today. I walked these grounds with anticipation many years ago. Well, many years ago. Years full of wonder, excitement, growth, and yes, a little learning. A learning, I shouldn't have said a little. Uh, when, when Chancellor Darbo asked me to speak here today, I was excited. Yet, could I step up and offer a meaningful and timely message? You will be my judge and jury. Teachers have a profound influence on our lives, and I am no exception. When I was a student here, I studied political science under the tutelage of Professor Lou Leopold. We were talking about him a little bit prior to today's uh, ceremony. He, uh, Professor Leopold, uh, fed me the educational nourishment that fueled my love for politics, government, and advocacy. Mr. Leopold had a flair and a panache for life in a way that I had never, ever encountered. He smoked brown cigarettes, moors. He smoked them between his middle finger and his ring finger. And he would puff on it and stick out his chest and exhale the air all while espounding the finer qualities of single malt scotch. He was quite a character. And isn't that part of our college years, the expanding of our cultural horizons? Even at my stature at six foot eight, I looked up to the man. Besides the classroom lectures, essays, and typical studies required for success in class, Professor Leopold taught me a priceless life lesson that has become one of my valued principles in the work that I do today as the founder and president of Voices in Advocacy. You see, we were from different political parties and as such often debated the value of one political position over another. These discussions, while passionate and thought-provoking, were also very respectful. He used to say, we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. Let me say that again. We can agree to disagree without being disrespectful. Professor Leopold instilled this in me. This is so important in our everyday dealings as well as our political discourse. Regrettably, it is not applied well today in the world of social media clickbait. However, it is important that we expand upon this statement. How can we agree to disagree without being disagreeable? Frankly, we cannot go into our corner simply agreeing to disagree. We cannot step aside. We must seek solutions. Folks, Withdrawal of engagement blooms like spring all around us when truth is too often denied. We need not accept this. As rooted as our likes and dislikes may seem, the wind of change and the tide of time often brings forth surprising shifts in these relations. This requires work on our end. Avoid any unnecessary hostility. Seek solutions 
rather than criticize the politicians, the political parties, and anyone else within earshot. Begin with a respect for a complete understanding of others' positions and reasoning. Engage positively and promote themes bound by commonality. Let us move forward with the intent to listen, to learn, to be more tolerant and less judgmental. These lessons have an important role in our lifelong dealings with family, friends, coworkers, let alone our politics. Furthermore, the spirit of a strong, diverse society requires this of us. Our society thrives when good people do good acts for other people without seeking acknowledgement or recognition. When I was young, I struggled in school. While in the sixth grade, a substitute teacher discovered that I had a deep learning challenge. I had advanced in school without being able to read. A caring teacher uncovered my dilemma. A plan was put forth into motion to receive private tutoring from a professional reading teacher who worked with me weekly for over a year. We wore out a dictionary. Those used to be books, students. You know, now they're on your phone. But we wore out a dictionary in the process of learning the meaning of words that I could say but did not know. He lit a bonfire in me for literature that still burns bright today. I tremble at the thought of where I would be today without the substitute's eye and the purposeful passion of my reading coach, Paul. If you choose, there are a million reasons to detest life when it throws you obstacles in your direction, which may cause you to be angry at the world and all around it. Or you can find a million reasons to love life and be happy. The choice is yours. As the cosmic philosopher Yoda says, do or do not, there is no try. So choose wisely. I would like to suggest some questions that you can ask yourself, graduates, throughout life to help you choose wisely. What do I need to do, not just plan to do, but need to do to keep getting better? What skills or additional education do I need to accomplish my goals? Where are my biggest challenges? and my biggest opportunities for success. And here is the most important question of all. What do I need to do to be a better person? You cannot be a better entrepreneur, employee, or family member without yourself trying to be a better person. These are great questions. Keep them close. Live them daily. Allow them to guide you on your life's journey. Most of us follow in the footsteps of other people, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. This is where you learn, grow, and develop your own mind, voice, and vision that will enable you to embark on your own path, a path tempered with the richness of your experiences, your connections and collaborations, your highs and lows. And once that voice is full of its own style, texture, and splendor, others will then follow you. You will then ride on the wind of a full sail, on your own course, chartered by you, for you, for you have what no one else has, and that is you. When it comes down to it, only you can create your destiny. You are the captain of your life's ship. I challenge you to strive for, thrive for, drive for excellence in all that you do. Do not follow the crowd. They most often don't know where they're going. 
One of the key ingredients to success in life and career is building meaningful relationships, especially with those who have very divergent views from your own. Much like Prof. Leopold, whom I mentioned earlier, it requires listening to hear, maturity and understanding, setting aside judgments and empathy for others. I was told at a young age that I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Many of us have heard that saying. That others whom I looked up to as mentors would only use me and when done, throw me out like dirty bathwater. This was the worst advice I ever received. Sadly, this advice stifled me into inaction, afraid that maybe, just maybe, this advice was correct. That my light, lot in life was set at birth, that there was nothing I could do to change the outcome. This advice was wrong. Then someone whom I admired gave me the best advice I have ever received. It came from a friend named Leonard who taught me that inaction has greater consequences than wrong action. Inaction has greater consequences than wrong action. And he would say wrong action you can correct. You can do nothing with inaction. Some people in your life may try to use you, then discard you, while others will lift you up, encourage you, show you, assist you, and lead you further down your life's path. The latter are the people of character. Over the years, I was fortunate to develop a relationship with the late Senator John McCain, whom I admired for his many qualities. He was fond of saying, no one of us, if they have character, leaves behind a wasted life. I implore you to heed his advice. For through character and the power of your voice, you can turn vice into virtue, slander into truth, indecision into action, arrogance into modesty, disgrace into honor, and ignorance into wisdom. Believe you can make a difference. The great American cultural anthropologist and recipient of the Planetary Citizen of the Year Award, Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. From the 56 brave signers of the Declaration of Independence who risked their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, to the handful of valiant ladies that led women's suffrage and women's right to vote, to the courageous people that marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, change can only happen when reasonable people are willing to stand up for the principles of decency, fairness, and good character. We believe in decency. We believe in fairness. We believe in you and your good character. We are granted rights in the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, but with these rights come obligations. Our Constitution begins with three simple words. We, the people. It doesn't begin with I, the king or me, the president, or we, the Congress. It begins with we, the people. As citizens, we must hold ourselves to account. We are responsible for supporting the ideals of democracy. History shows that we have always found a way to recognize these values of democracy. We have fought for our rights. We have stood up for what we believe in, and we have made our voices heard. We, the people, hold the keys to our future. America needs engaged citizens, citizens not bystanders. America needs you to fulfill an obligation to make our society better than the generations before you. 
The most important tasks of a democracy are done by everyone. We need you, the people, to engage. Let us choose a future where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Let us choose a future where everyone has opportunity. It is essential to use your powerful voice to advocate for the issues that matter the most to you. Whether it's climate change, social justice, sensible gun legislation, or economic inequality, your education here on this campus has given you the tools to make a difference. Don't be afraid to use your voice to speak up and share ideas to create a more perfect union and promote justice for all. We must persevere in our search for answers in today's most pressing issues in the hope that constructive changes may bring within reach the solutions which we now seem impossible. You are the generation that has the power to create change and shape the future of our world. And we need you. The future is yours to create. Make it a future that we all can be proud of. Know that success doesn't come alone but rather with a community, a village, a group of like-minded people that proudly stands up and confesses that we are... In my travels, I often meet new fellow Penn Staters, and immediately barriers between us are broken down by two simple yet powerful words. We are... And the two-word reply of... We didn't practice that, did we? <laughs> but those two words of Penn State often open doors to a world of new and exciting possibilities. Embrace these possibilities. Engage with your community and remain a part of the Penn State family. Trust me when I say with experience that your pride in this institution of higher learning will grow dramatically which, with each passing year. I have a proclamation for you, a challenge, ah, better yet a promise. At the end of World War II, Winston Churchill exclaimed, this is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning. And yes, this is the end of the beginning of a lifelong journey full of education. How exciting for you. You bunt you. You bunt you is a word from a sub-Saharan African language. The word you bunt you means humanity towards others and is often translated as I am because we are. I see this as the same meaning behind Penn State's we are humanity towards others. I am because we are. You are because of we are. And finally, it is time to look ahead and think of what you'll do. The world is full of opportunities and there's so much work for you to do. Your generation has a voice and it's time to be heard, to stand up for what you believe and speak out loud with every word. So take your diploma with pride and go into the world Make a difference every day and let your voice be heard. For if you step up to this challenge, you will have a great and lasting impact on our society. Wherever your journey takes you, remember you bunt you. I am because we are. Congratulations on your graduation. That was brilliant. Uh, thank you, Richard, for that very inspirational message. And I hope our graduates take the message to heart. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nicholas Rowland, a member of Penn State University's Board of Trustees who will authorize the granting of degrees. 
Dr. Nicholas Rowland was elected to the Board of Trustees effective July 1, 2021, as an academic trustee. He was nominated for the role by the University Faculty Senate, for which he served as chair during the 2019-2020 academic year. Dr. Rowland is a professor of sociology at Penn State Altoona. He holds a master's degree and a doctoral degree from Indiana University, as well as a bachelor's degree from St. John's University, each in sociology. Dr. Rowland has been recognized by Penn State with the Excellence in Classroom Teaching Award, the Grace D. Long Award for Faculty Excellence, and the George W. Atherton Award for Excellence in Teaching. We are extremely pleased that he is with us today. Trustee Rowland. Uh, thank you, Dr. Darbo. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I offer my congratulations to the class of 2023. There are many family members and friends who have come here to join us. Um, I'll start by just saying it's an honor to be here and to share this day. This is a big moment. Um, and it's really something special for me. And the reason I see so many familiar faces over here, uh, the reason it is is that while I serve the Board of Trustees, as Chancellor Darbo has said, my, my office is across the street. And so when I see these students, when I see these faculty, these are, these are my students, these are my colleagues. And so while I could gush about each one of them, of course, um, I was brought up, folks, with the idea that a good speech was a short one. So quick plug for the board, and then we'll get to the official stuff. So first things first, you're all going to be alum in no time. Um, it's important to remember that you have a say in the future direction of the university. All Penn State alumni, this is the key, all Penn State alumni may participate in the nomination and election process for alumni elected members of our Board of Trustees. This is one of the many opportunities you will have throughout your lives to remain active members in this Penn State community that, of course, we all love. So please stay engaged, consider voting on uh, the uh, board elections in the future. And so, final item, the official stuff. <coughs> Chancellor Darbo. By virtue of the authority vested in and as approved by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, you are authorized on behalf of the board to confer on each of these candidates the degree earned as certified by the appropriate college faculty and dean. So. This is the official bling. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Roland. And now we will have the presentation of the candidates for the conferring of their respective degrees. I invite Dr. Brian Black, head of the Division of Arts and Humanities, to come forward and present the candidates from his division. Greetings. Would the candidates for degrees from the Division of Arts and Humanities please stand if you are able? Dr. Darbo, I present to you these degree candidates from the Division of Arts and Humanities. They have met all of their degree requirements as outlined and approved by their faculty. It is with overwhelming pleasure that I present these candidates to you for the conferring of their degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I now bestow upon each of you your respective degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. Beautiful. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Black. I invite Dr. Todd Batzel, Interim Head of the Division of Business, Engineering, and Information Sciences and Technology, to come forward and present the candidates from his division. Would the candidates for degrees from the Division of Business, Engineering, and Information Sciences and Technology please stand if you're able.
Dr. Darbo, I present to you these degree candidates from the Division of Business, Engineering, and Information Sciences and Technology. They have met all of their degree requirements as outlined and approved by their faculty. I am profoundly pumped to present these candidates to you for conferring of their degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I now bestow upon each of you your respective degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Batzel. I now invite Dr. Leon Hefner, head of the Division of Education, Human Development, and Social Sciences, to come forward and present the candidates from her division. Would the candidates for degrees from the Division of Education, Human Development, and Social Sciences please stand if you are able? Dr. Darbo, I present to you these degree candidates from the Division of Education, Human Development, and Social Sciences. They have met all of their degree requirements as outlined and approved by their faculty. It is with unbound joy that I present these <laughs> candidates to you for the conferring of their degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I now bestow upon each of you your respective degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Hefner. And now I invite Dr. Ed Levery, head of the Division of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, to come forward and present the candidates from his division. Would the candidates for the degrees from the Division of Mathematics and Natural Sciences please stand if you are able. Dr. Darbo, I present to you these degree candidates from the Division of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. They have met all of their degree requirements as outlined and approved by their faculty. It is with infinite pleasure and pride that I present these candidates to you for the conferring of their degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I now bestow upon each of you your respective degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Levery. As Chancellor of Penn State Altoona, I am pleased to introduce Imoni Moore as a Spring 2023 Schreier Honors College graduate at Penn State Altoona. I now invite Imoni and her thesis advisors to come to stand in the front of the stage for the, Friar, for the Schreier Honors College medal presentation. The Schreier Honors College is Penn State University's, is Penn State's university-wide honors program. It comprises a broad set of opportunities for study, research, travel, and scholarly exploration in the arts, humanities, and sciences. Its goal is to provide an educational environment in which students of high ability and motivation may achieve their full potential by exploring areas in which they are personally interested. 
The program's hallmark is an honors thesis that allows them to showcase their diverse intellectual interests in the form of a substantial, independently inspired research or creative project. More than 4,000 of, of these medallions have been presented to Penn State graduates over the years. They are inscribed as follows. Scholarly achievement, integrity of purpose, and intellectual curiosity. This medal is a tangible symbol of the outstanding accomplishments and dedication of these students. Imoni Moore is graduating with a major in psychology from Penn State Altoona. During her undergraduate career, she was able to enrich and to be active around campus and in the surrounding community by serving as a resident assistant, an RA, secretary of a psychology club, a research lab assistant, and an intern at Blair Family Solutions and Evolutions Counseling Services. Imoni has been awarded multiple awards and scholarships, including the Excellence in Psychology Award and Dean's List Recognition every semester, all while being able to complete her bachelor's degree in three years. <laughs> With the help of Dr. Nicole Gilbertson and Dr. Irene Muir, Imoni's honest thesis focused on evaluating the motivators and barriers to engaging in exercise among college students, faculty, and staff. The thesis was undertaken with the hope to increase productivity and healthy living among our campus community. Ultimately, Imoni's goal is to provide a safe and welcoming environment for children to freely express how they feel without their concerns going unnoticed and untreated. Thus, after graduation, she'll be continuing her education at George Washington University to obtain her PsyD in clinical psychology. Please join me in congratulating Imoni and wishing her much success in her future endeavors. Now proceed with the presentation of graduates. Dr. William White, our nomenclator, will introduce our graduates. We will begin with the candidates in the Division of Arts and Humanities. The following graduates are in the Bachelor of Arts degree in Communications. Colby Maxwell Cower. Andrew Harmon. Samantha Mone. Isaac Hassis Swanson. Jewel Marie Wyant. The following graduates from the Bachelor of Arts degree in English. Danielle Jane West of Janitz. Patrick Lewis Walford. <laughs> the following graduates from the Bachelor of Arts degree in History, Alicia Dutrow. <laughs> Joseph Von Gagermeyer. Noah Plank. Thank you. 
Matthew Wolf. The following graduates were in the Bachelor of Arts degree in Integrative Arts. Caroline Elise Eckenrode. Grace Margaret Files. Christian Samuel Howard, cum laude. Lauren Owen McGarvey. The following graduate has earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Multidisciplinary Studies, Julia Ray Almiller. The following graduates have earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Visual Art Studies, Amy Lee Norris. Next, we'll award degrees in the Division of Business Engineering and Information Sciences and Technology. The following graduates are in the Associate of Science degree in Business Administration, Brianna Blevins. The following graduates are in the Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting, Haley Chambers, Summa Cum Laude. Zachary Douglas Kopp. Kyle Fortney, magna cum laude. Matthew Leonard Garrett. Matthew G. Gua II. Jordan Moraz. Cheyenne Middendorf, cum laude. Stephanie Swain. Tomasz Jan Augustin Massimilian Zukowski. The following graduates from the Bachelor of Science degree in Business. Kaylin Elizabeth Behrens, cum laude. Justin Best, magna cum laude. Alana Ann Feathers, magna cum laude. Salvatore Francis Fiore. Caitlin Gibson. Garrett P. Giedrock. Robert Walter Lape IV. Joseph Pelicani. Adam Ratkus. <laughs> Kyle.
Gabriela Annalise Sheftek. Bradley Adam Schaefer. Alexa Danielle Smith, summa cum laude. Lauren Stetler. Vanessa N. Wilt. Caitlin Elizabeth Wolf. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Cybersecurity Analytics and Operations. Nathan Leonard Fisher. Colby Sullivan Matisse. The following graduates have earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Electromechanical Engineering Technology. Brennan Paul Bailey. Elizabeth Nicole Bender. Richard D. Cronister. <laughs> Brett Eckenrode, summa cum laude. <laughs> Nicholas Garrett. Bryce Anthony Hornberger. Alex Michael Horwitz. Seth David Horwitz. Matthew Joseph Illig, cum laude. Andrew Todd Imler. Isaac J. Jackson. Benjamin Vincent Leffler, cum laude. Zachary Ryan McCarty. Jason Thomas McElhaney. Stephen Henry Nileski. Stephen Roderick St. Pierre. Michael D. Van Hook. Jacob Allen Binglass. Matthew Robert Weimert. Marcus Anthony Werfel. Bentley Allen Zimmerman. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Rail Transportation Engineering. Connor Joseph Cashman. Kerry J. Chen. (laughs) 
William Arthur Ferry. Chang Ting Lee. Dawson John Luzier. Nicholas William Martino. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Security and Risk Analysis. Cody Anthony Dively. Caitlin Estreit. Kyle Glass. Alexander Lieb. Next, we will award degrees in the Division of Education, Human Development, and Social Sciences. The following graduates have earned the Associate of Science degree in Criminal Justice, Luke Edward Brown. Tyler James Doyle. Trey Matthew Stever. The following graduates from the Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice, Bryson Oliver Byers. Trevor Fink. Dylan M. Hench. Jacob Christian Jested. Rolando E. Longuera. Dylan R. Maddox. Evangeline Miller. Raylene Danae Simmers. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Jenna Elizabeth Bartlett. Hannah Shawnee Cherry. Brandy Alexandra Conahay. Jocelyn Nicole Gingrich. Megan Hartman, cum laude. Macy Marie Hicks, summa cum laude. Fisher Rose Hobble. Taylor Lee Kilmer. Ryan Leonard. Nevin Michael Mauger. Lydia Rebecca Mock. Kayla Grace Moran.
Abby Mae Richards. Ashton Blair Robinson, cum laude. Rachel K. Stuck. Sarah Elizabeth Wendell. Mary Wilson. Michaela Lynn Wolf, magna cum laude. The following graduates from the Bachelor of Science degree in Human Development and Family Studies, Justin Charlton. Allison Kate Cover. Crystal L. Crothers. Jenna Nicole Cumming. Chandler Bryant Edwards. Haven Feathers. Emily Harpster. Danielle Nicole Irwin. Scott David McHale. The following graduates are in the Bachelor of Science degree in Kinesiology. Bailey Elise Fields. Sarah Michelle Houston. Christopher Ben Loera. Aaron Lutz. Sadie Elise McConnell. <laughs> Hannah Jo Nyanko. <laughs> Olivia Smith. <laughs> Katana Yawn. The following graduates were in the Bachelor of Science degree in Nursing. Hannah Adewale. <laughs> Samantha Anderson, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emily Sheridan Bingerman. Taylor R. Bumgarner. <laughs> Zoe Lee Kutchel. Grace D'Angelo. <laughs> Shannon Marie Detweiler. Isaiah Dixon. <laughs> Hannah Joelle Durf. <laughs> Sarah, 
Nicholas Fasonic. Katie Lisette Flores. Woo! Anna Fru. <laughs> Emily Garris. <laughs> Ali Grace Goss. Taylor Heckman. Yeah. Avery Heisey. Yeah. Riley Taylor Keeler. Yeah. Victoria Christina Lindy. Lindsay Marie McLaren, summa cum laude. Mackenzie Jade McCoy. Michaela Alexis McCracken. Courtney Raylan McMath. Courtney Sierra Moyer. Jamila Nasiri. Alyssa Marie Nastas. Hannah Palco. Marissa Lynn Peros. Tori Philstucker. Katerina Maria Poulos. Regina Marie Redinger. Emma Alana Richwine. Ty Roach McClendon. Ivy Rost. Alexis Ryan. <laughs> Natalie L. Saylor. <laughs> Casey Marie Schaefer. <laughs> Macy Ellen Shaver. Elijah Treese. Alexander Obed Washington. Isaac James Woomer, magna cum laude. Megan Nicole Yingling. The following graduates have earned their Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology. Allison May Barley. Yeah, 
The following graduates are in the Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology. Reed Duchess, summa cum laude. Reed Daniel Keller. Sierra Charlene McConnell. Imani Moore, cum laude. Rebecca Reeder. Sophia Grace Rubellino. Next, we will award degrees in the Division of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. The following graduates are in the Bachelor of Arts degree in Environmental Studies. Abigail Elizabeth Craig. Donovan Myers. So far. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Biology. Emma Elizabeth Kitko, cum laude. Connor Oaks. Tyler Joseph Palfe, summa cum laude. Alicia A. Royer. Benjamin M. Tilmus. The following graduates have earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Studies. Nicholas T. Blauk. Paige Bethany Dom. The following graduate has earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics. Emma Hoover, summa cum laude. Next, we will award degrees in all other degrees. The following graduate has earned the Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice. Rachel E. Russell, magna cum laude. Let's give a round of applause to all of our graduates. graduates just stand one more time. Let's give them one more round of applause. Please, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce Bobby Miller, Chair of Penn State Altoona's Advisory Board, who will offer her congratulations. Bobby? Honored grads and special guests, it is my pleasure to represent the Penn State Altoona Advisory Board. We are a group of individuals who recognize the importance of Penn State Altoona and working with Penn State 
and watching you guys today, it just gives us pleasure in knowing that we are able to uh, communicate with you. We are your community partner with Penn State. Graduates, this is such an exciting and pivotal time. And I encourage you to take a few minutes and think back on your years of Penn State. Remember the first day you arrived. I don't know about you, but when I, my first day at Penn State, I was scared. And then as I, as I learned and realized that you have a community to work with, it became exciting. And we look back and see how you've grown in, in the years. Remember your professors and other people who have helped you, taught you, inspired you to reach your goals. Remember lessons learned, challenges overcome, experiences enjoyed, memories made, and fun times shared. Remember your roots, both your hometown of your, and your home here at Penn State Altoona. And always remember the love and respect and support that your family and friends while you've been at school, both at home and here at Penn State in your life's journey thus far. Congratulations and best wishes on your future journeys. Thank you, Bobby. Today we are pleased to have with us the president of Penn State Altoona's Alumni Society Board, Tracy Heinisch. Tracy? Well, good morning, graduates, and congratulations, class of 2023. You did it. You're here. You made it this far. It's the last hour of the last day of your time as a college student. While today's graduation seems the marked end of your Penn State college career, it doesn't mean the end of your relationship with Penn State. Today is the start of a new chapter for you. The Penn State Alumni Association celebrates your successes and welcomes you into a proud network of Penn Staters. Your Alumni Association is powered by pride. More than 174,000 alumni and friends like you keep their connection to our world-class university strong through the membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. Today, on behalf of the Alumni Association, I am honored to share our graduation gift to you, which is a one-year free membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. Your membership keeps you in touch with Penn State and connects you with more than 300 geographically dispersed alumni chapters, interest groups, and college and campus societies. No matter where you will live, what you've studied, or which campus you attended, we have a group that matches your interests. After graduation, once you are settled, reach out to your local Penn State alumni chapter. Your Penn State family will be happy to hear from you. I can't tell you through the years how many people I've met through Penn State when I am out in different areas, so please take advantage of that. I also invite you to visit the Penn State Altoona Alumni Relations Office in the Kazmaier Family Building in downtown Altoona. And if you visit University Park in the coming years, please stop by Hintz Family Center Alumni Center. At this time, I request our new graduates and all other Penn State alumni with us today to please rise if you are able and join me in showing our Penn State pride. Our speaker today, Roger, gave us a little practice in this earlier, so there are no excuses now for not shouting it with a lot of Penn State pride. We are. Penn State. We are. Penn State. We are. Penn State. Thank you. You're welcome. They got it. <laughs> now, 
it gives me great pleasure to induct all graduating students of Penn State Altoona into the Penn State Alumni Association. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Tracy. Please be seated. As we near the end of today's ceremony, I would like to share with you words of my favorite poem, one that has served as a wonderful compass for me and which I hope will do the same for you as you aspire to lives of success and service. It is called the Desiderata, or Desired Things, and was written by Max Ehrman several years ago. It reads as follows. Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant, for they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons, for they are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you will become vain or bitter, for always they will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans, and keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Note your strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. In closing, I'd like to share with you a quote from Penn State's 12th president, Eric Walker, who said more than half a century ago, the university consists not entirely of the faculty, nor of the campus and buildings upon it, nor even of the students in residence at any one time. It also consists of all who have entered the university and have gone forth from her. As with those who have gone forth before, you are now part of Penn State and she is part of you. Wherever you go, she will go with you. Wherever you work, the university will be at work. Whatever you do, Penn State will be reflected in your success and your triumphs. Fred Louis Paty succinctly expressed this concept when he penned our alma mater. May no act of ours bring shame. May our lives but swell thy fame. Now, in just a moment, we will sing our alma mater and have the recessional. The words to the alma mater are printed in your program. I ask that members of the audience please remain in place until the recessional concludes. And now, please stand if you are able and join Penn State Altoona student, again, Christian Howard, in singing the alma mater. <laughs> 